We are now pretty clear about words like heat, temperature, thermal energy, thermal equilibrium. But just to warm up a little, let's walk through them. Now thermal energy, yeah, pretty obvious. That is if you remember the jiggling ball model. The kinetic energy of all these jiggling balls make up the thermal energy. You know that. I also told you that this is a highly simplified model and we will discuss what actually happens at the atomic level in detail later. Moving ahead, the question of origin of temperature and heat turned out to be a question like uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? We sort of tripped on how thermometers were conceived and how beautiful physics was developed even with doubtful foundations. Alright, let's talk about heat. We now know that saying this body contains this much heat doesn't make sense, at least according to physicists. Heat is the flow of energy, energy in transit. It is the flow, the flow of thermal energy. And this thermal energy kind of flows via heat till the temperatures of two bodies become equal. And yes, we named that situation too. That situation is called thermal equilibrium. Now this chapter is all about that flow of heat. And because I find it really interesting, I'm going to discuss the flow of heat via radiation first. Yeah, radiation. It's why the sun is able to keep the earth so warm and is a source of almost all forms of energy we see on earth. Hey wait, what about nuclear energy? Well, I said almost all forms of energy we see on earth. Why don't you listen to me? Now in previous classes, we have learned that heat can transfer through conduction, convection or radiation. Now conduction is when two bodies are in physical contact and the heat flows from one to another. Convection is when matter itself moves and transfers heat. Now hold your horses, we will discuss these in detail in this chapter but now let's talk about radiation. Now radiation doesn't need any material medium to transfer heat. Energy is transmitted through space just like light. In fact exactly like light. Let me clarify that. Do you know that light is an electromagnetic wave? Somebody must have told you that, right? But in any case, now that I think about it, knowing that fact makes no difference if you don't know what, it, what we mean by it. You'd only understand it way more clearly after having gone through the course of electromagnetism. So even I am going to consciously commit the crime of telling you it as a fact that light is an electromagnetic wave. And every electromagnetic wave has a definite wavelength. What we call visible light or just light in common language is a very small set of these frequencies or these wavelengths. It is a continuous set from red to violet but it is a really small set we call the visible spectrum. But in nature there are infinite frequencies that exist and thermal radiation is nothing but these electromagnetic waves being given off by an object. And the most interesting part is what I already stated for radiation to travel you don't need no medium. Back in the late 1800s, when the electromagnetic theory was yet not fully developed, a guy named Pierre Prevost presented a theory. He said, every object in this universe radiates heat. No matter what its temperature is, it must be over zero Kelvin. That's all. Let me repeat his bold claim. Every object in this universe radiates heat no matter what its temperature is. It means that my right hand is sort of radiating heat right now and so are my glasses and so is the walls of this room. We tend to think that only luminous objects uh, radiate heat like the sun or the tube light or, or your phone screen. They radiate heat because, because we can see it. But Prevost said that nope, just because you can't see doesn't mean things aren't radiating heat. Everything radiates. Of course, back then he didn't have the benefit of knowing the 200 year long research into magnetism, the major parts of which uh, happened after him. So he didn't know uh, these radiations are electromagnetic waves. He simply called them heat waves. He found out that the amount of this radiation emitted per second, let me repeat, the amount of the radiation emitted per second 
dependent on the nature of the object, its surface area, and the temperature of the object. Prevo proposed that if an object were hotter, this rate would be more. Similar effect if an object had a greater surface area, that the rate would increase. Though he had no way to quantify the heat transfer, he just did some experiments and put forth these qualitative ideas. Well, you can't blame the guy, right? Things were barely known back then. Anyway, Prevo also proposed that not only do all objects radiate at whatever temperature, but simultaneously, and underline simultaneously, they also absorb heat. So simultaneously, God, I love saying that word. Simultaneously, objects radiate and absorb heat. And simultaneously means at the same time. Simultaneously. But the rate at which they radiate is proportional to their own temperature. And the rate at which they absorb depends on the temperature of the surrounding. So my palm, my beautiful, beautiful palm right now is radiating heat at a rate proportional to the temperature of my palm. But it is also absorbing heat simultaneously at the rate proportional to the rate to the temperature of this room. Now this happens because the surrounding is also radiating, not just my palm. And my palm sort of comes in way of the, of the radiations of the surrounding. Now the only question is, when will this ever stop? Well, right about now. So in the last section, we spoke how any object radiates heat with its rate proportional to its own temperature. But simultaneously, it also absorbs heat and that rate is proportional to the temperature of the surrounding. And then we ask, when does this business stop? Well, as Provo says, never. But we all know that never really ever means never, right? Yeah. So as bodies radiate, they lose their thermal energy and their temperature comes down, right? As you lose your thermal energy, temperature is supposed to come down. And as the temperature comes down, the rate of radiation decreases because it was proportional to the temperature. So let's say you have a strongly heated metal placed somewhere. Yeah, like that. If it will keep losing heat, and its temperature will keep falling. But simultaneously, it is also absorbing heat. You remember? From where? From the environment. And that is, it is, and that heat is trying to raise its temperature. But because its temperature is still higher than that of surrounding, it is radiating way more than it is absorbing. So as a whole, the temperature is falling. It will keep falling till the temperature of the metal meets the temperature of the surrounding. And once the temperature of the body or this particular metal becomes equal to that of the surrounding, it will radiate at the same rate as it will absorb. So while radiating, it is giving off energy, absorbing is taking that energy. When the temperature would become equal and thus the radiation will become, the rate of radiation will become equal to the rate of absorption. This is when thermal equilibrium is established. See, both the temperatures are in agreement and there is no net flow of heat through the body. There is just a sort of peaceful balance. By the way, I am pretty sure you know that by this, by the same logic, a colder body will absorb more than it will radiate and eventually reach to this peaceful thermal equilibrium. And in this example, by the way, I assumed that, that the temperature of the surrounding is fixed but strictly speaking that need not be so and you would ask then what just like you learn in calorimetry the net exchange of heat will stop once they agree at some common temperature now this theory looks beautiful and back then it seemed really promising but science doesn't work just on beautiful theories we need to develop the proper mathematics let's do that but before doing that let's look into something called as a black body. Yeah, it's a technical term. I'm not being racist. Now I'm again going to commit a crime by giving you some direct facts. I need you to trust me that experiments were conducted which established these facts. If let's say some amount of radiation 
falls on a body, it need not absorb all of it. It absorbs only a small part of it or some part of it. And as a thumb rule, we know that the lighter the color of the body is, the lesser it will absorb. A shiny polished surface, for example, absorbs very little of this incident radiation. And conversely, the darker a body is, the more it will absorb. Remember, this is just a thumb rule. So a black body absorbs a very good percentage of the radiations falling into it because sort of the darkest. If a body absorbs all the radiation falling into it, 100%, nothing held back, it is called an ideal black body. Let me repeat, an ideal black body is one that absorbs all the radiation falling into it. Now this concept is too ideal and nothing really is a black body. But we have good approximations like um, uh, lamp black. It absorbs almost 99% of radiation incident upon it and reflects just 1%. So in conclusion, well, I just realized that uh, all this can be stated in just a simple line. Black bodies are good absorbers of radiation, yo. Alright y'all, we've just learned that black bodies are good absorbers of heat, you know what I'm saying? But let's do this third experiment, yeah? Let's say I place two bodies in a room, a polished shiny one and a black body. And imagine that I have kept the areas same. This is the great thing about thought experiments, you can imagine almost anything you want. But those have to be um, useful. Like I can imagine Batman holding these two objects like that. But would that be useful here? Let's keep him though, because he's Batman. Coming back. Now I know that if I leave them for some time, both these bodies will come to a common temperature. The thermal equilibrium. The interesting part is, what's happening after thermal equilibrium is achieved? Now you know, black bodies are extremely good absorbers of heat radiations. So the black body right now is absorbing way more heat per second than the shiny polished one. But they have the same temperature. The temperature is the measure of the thermal energy of the bodies. So if the black one is absorbing more, yet is at the same temperature as the shiny one, it means that it must also be radiating more as well. In fact, the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of emission for any of these bodies. That's why the temperature is maintained. So in reality, the black bodies don't just absorb fast, but they radiate fast as well. So in simple words, black bodies are both good absorbers and good emitters of heat radiations. This line used to confuse me a lot back then uh, when I first encountered this concept. But now I have un understood it, uh, you know, what it means. It means a black body like absorbs really, really fast, but simultaneously it gives off heat really quickly too. Why do I find that fact so sad? 